feel nauseous, believe me. Never had a lot of sh come easy. Had to work hard, struggle just to be me. Had to rise up just so they could see me. Welcome back to Perspective with Itu, where we have conversations that matter with your favorite celebrities, darling. Yes. Today, we have an extraordinary, an extraordinary guest. Palisa Madisukwani is a South African actress best known for her role as music executive Palisa in the SABC One Soapy Generations. She left the Soapy in June 2009. She played the role of Namsa in the ETV drama series Eka See Our Stories in the episode entitled Neighbors in season two in 2010. And now she's currently on Rainbow FM. She's done Ashes to Ashes, Gazlam, Grown Woman, Isibaya, Living the Dream with Some Easy, Lakshan Lyric, Mfolozi Street, Raw Silk, Soul Buddies, The Estate, The River, Darling, The List goes on and on and on. So without further ado, welcome to your perspective. Finally, I'm Finally. here. <laughs> I got the inside. I'm here. <laughs> you are here. Oh, yeah. oh my God. I am so honored. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm honored. I'm honored to meet you. I'm honored to be here. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. Uh -huh. Ooh, wow. <laughs> so before we started with um, shooting, you wanted to know when I was from. Then I said, you know, I'm from Sushanguve and so forth. And then I said, no, 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 we're not. <laughs> you mustn't respond because, you know, I want to ask you that. Where are you from and and how was it? Did you grow up with both parents? Okay. And how many siblings do you have? All right. Okay. Let me first start by saying, okay, thank you for recognizing me as a celebrity. But <laughs> funny because I don't see myself as a celebrity. Yeah. I just see myself as somebody, you know, a young girl who was passionate about TV. I went into onto TV, and when I started appearing on TV, then people saying, "Oh, I guess celebrity." I'm like, yeah. "Oh, okay." So, does it mean how come all TV celebrity? Lau fiti le kamo mrao kabo, you know, the stars mko ni pega se ni kamo le sone celebrity. I'm like, "I mean, <laughs> but anyway, I just maybe consider myself a public figure. I don't know." I just feel like a celebrity is just a word that is just overused. Anybody fellow can go go TV. Now you call them celebrities. I so got you. To me, it makes me like shrink. I mean, what celebrity for me? Kibo, bo we ni Mandela, go Nelson Mandela, you know, and those yeah. But I get okay. you. But anyway, if the people want to call me a celebrity, Ryan, you stop you. Eh, you in party side. I'm not gonna stop you, but I don't yeah, consider celebrity. myself. And thank you. You know what I mean. Yeah, thank you. Yes, we are celebrating you and all of the amazing work that you've done. And that's why we call you a celebrity. I can never answer this one. But otherwise, to me, I was born in 1975. Yes, I'm that young. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I mean, just look at you. Hey? Yeah. Just as ever. <laughs> yeah. So I was born in 1975. I'm not afraid of my age because I feel like where I'm at right now, mm. a lot of youngsters don't even reach to the age mm. where I'm at. So I really thank God for each and every Ekepilangayona. Mm. I was born in Deep Loof, Kosoweto, and I was raised by my grandmother. Mm. You no, know, where we grew up, my grandmother had seven children. So when um, all our mothers started giving birth to us, the grandchildren, they went to live their own life. And I grew up in a family home called Dukluf, you know, it was a big family home. So all the great grandkids were there, uh, really about, about 14, you know, at home. So when I was born, my grandmother named me Unumpumelelo. Okay. Yeah, so that's the name that, you know, when anybody says to me Unumpumelelo, yeah. they call me Pumi. Okay. Go high. I'm about to Pumi, then get to share. Yeah. But I'm like, okay, it's probably one 
of those that know Palisa. Hello, you say, but I'm Pumi. Yeah. Non Pumelelo. I'm like, hey, you non Pumelelo. Yeah, Pumelelo. You know, so, so then obviously I'll say, ah, this one definitely knows me. So that's how I grew up. Um, I used to call my grandmother Mama. Sure. Because, you know, Mama, you know, but I'm Mama, but I'm Mama, but I'm Mama, but I'm but my grandmother who named me Numpumelelo, sure. that's my mom. But hey, you know, when my grandmother passed away, when the pillar of the family passed away, mm. the one who, you know, brought the family together, mm. where we grew up knowing who, you know, even we were not even cousins. Mm. To me, my cousins were my sisters because we grew up together, waking up together, you know, how to papa. You know, I remember they used to cook, you know, my sisters, elder sisters would cook in big pots. Sure. Yeah. So that's the life that I know, sure. you know. And sure. it was a beautiful big family only up until, you know, my grandmother passed away. And obviously, you know, the family started parting. The family started going their own ways. And some of us, now we had to go to our mother's places. My mom was married. Uh, my mom had a house go Mulapo, go Rockville in Soweto. So I think all the grandkids because the pillar, you know, the head of the family, the one who was holding that torch, mm. you know, that torch had been dimmed. So, but otherwise, um, my mom's my mom passed on now, but my mom was a a teacher. Her name was Usintebu Pamela. May her soul rest in peace. And um, I was brought up by my mom and dad. Um, so that's why I grew up go so way to. And um I honestly, you know, when I grew up I think I was a I was a vibrant child, you know. Mm-hmm. I loved the arts. I used to take part go to beat contesting, like a bubble miss wrong being leads. Yes, I know. We can just talk in somebody so Yeah. Oh, one myself. Oh, she Yeah, From It was nice. You know, I, I was happy, you know, when I was growing up. And one thing that I remember about my mom, my mom was one woman who supported each and everything in the years. Wow. I think my mom spotted, or my mom knew, well, this one, she's going to be, you know, in the entertainment industry sure. because I used to love, you know, um, with the modeling, I used to love acting at school. I also used to take parts, go to drama classes. That's just, that was just me when I was growing up. And every beauty competition that I entered, my mom, I had like a new dress, earrings and the hairstyle, anybody can go cut it, you know what I mean? Mm. So that's why I'm like, you know, when if there's one thing that I need to give credit to, you know, yeah. about somebody who supported my my career or my talent or what mom what she spotted you know my sure. mom was the one who spotted that sure. in me so she supported me loving music dancing and singing um but on another side said side it's not like i grew up in a silver spoon um my mom and my dad went through a separation mm-hmm. and as we were growing up and you know as a child as a teenager, seeing your parents fighting every time, sometimes it would even be physical. And, mm. you know, that, that I think really affected me so much. When you know, sure. um, as much as my mom was a teacher, my dad was a business person, we grew up very well, we were very well taken care of. But just that abuse that one experiences you know, as she grows up in the house, it wasn't, it affected me, Nganika, me and my sister. It affected me psychologically. It affected me psychologically in a sense, Yaurim. When my mom passed on, um, my mom passed on ga, what you call, or what the doctors call liver cirrhosis. My mom became an alcoholic. Hmm. I think the marriage, the fighting, the separation, you know, in the house, it really affected her so much. And she found solace in drinking. Mm-hmm. 
So growing up, looking at your mother, you know, um, sometimes not being able to walk or sometimes you'd be called by mama or girl, you know, and then she would come back with a car, and, you know, seeing sometimes your mom can't even wake up now to be the teacher that she used to be because of this alcohol, because of always drinking, always seeing your mom drunk. And when you know her, when your father comes back home, there's going to be a fight again. It was very painful, you know what I mean? And I had to experience all of that. And I think that affected me so much psychologically. And hence, I don't drink at all today. Mm. I've never tasted alcohol. Mm. I hate the taste of alcohol. I don't drink. I don't even think that I will drink, you know, because I feel like every time when I see alcohol, it takes me back. Yeah. Takes me back to remembering how our family broke because of this thing called alcohol. I experienced my mom seeing my mom losing her dignity mm. as a very respected teacher in the community. But because sometimes she would wake up and not being able to go to work because of, you know, drinking, or sometimes she would probably go to work as it's annually and, you know, um, yeah, I just experienced how alcohol destroying my family and destroying my mom to an extent that it was sometimes so embarrassing even to, you know, to go and play outside because maybe so-and-so or some kids, they saw your mom drunk, but say, go in and stuff. Mm. So um, I don't drink today. I hate alcohol, you know, mm. because of that. I think it affected me psychologically. So. I've never tasted it. I don't even think I want to taste it, <laughs> you know, but I've got friends who drink and they don't, they don't mind. They even laugh at me and they take advantage of me, you know, because sometimes when we would go out and maybe we are partying, but no, I'm just out to drive. I'm just buying a little bit of a little bit of a But the funny thing is, even when we go out with my friends, I would have more fun, I think, than them because so. they would even think, oh, man, this woman, why not? You know, because I would be the one who would drive you. You know, and the people think, man, why? Oh. We can get that one But I guess, you know, I took it from my mom. She was a very vibrant person, sure. very lively, very, you know, she was very open, you know. So anyway, that's how I grew up. Hence I'm saying it's not like, you know, I grew up, you know, with a silver spoon. Mm -hmm. I experienced I grew up from a family where there was abuse. I grew up from, you know, uh having an alcoholic mom and I saw all the struggles, you know. Mm. Um the only thing that I can say, you know, I give a crown to my mom for is supporting me for the talent that I've, you know, that was in me for what I loved. I remember when I started, you know, like realizing, okay, I actually, there was this thing called TV, you know, the new TV, the SABC one, I think, you know, and then there was a lady called Mam Lillian Dungbeko, so where to go, you know. And then I was like, oh, mama, hey, you know, mama's like, oh, okay, fine. You know, then she gave me money because I'm a this other guy. And then she gave me money because I'm a little bit of a TV. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then my mom gave me two randa and got things. And if it's like, oh, I'm like, hey, mama, little bit of a TV. And she was in this, in, in this TV, I think, um, show called Mope. Okay. I didn't want to go to Mope. I was like, yo, my yeah. goodness, oh, but Baba Pila, you no. know what I mean? Pila, Mam Lilian Dube. And she welcomed me so much and just started loving me and hugging me. Sure. And I remember I was 16 years old. Yeah. The first TV show, when I first started appearing on television, I think it was a, 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 a youth, um, can I get, oh, yeah, youth um, school, school show, yeah. I think. You know, yeah. So that was in a colored school. Yeah. And the funny thing at my school, remember I was in I was from Soweto, right? And my mom took us to school and 
Eldorado Park, which was a colored area. Yeah. So at that time, we weren't so popular with Nabat Uncle Soweto because we were black children, these black, you know, kids yeah. from Soweto, and then they come to Eldorado Park. And now, you know, yeah, very gender, you know. Yeah. Very gender, uh, can they span, fan so way to us, yeah. you know. And, you know, at that time, so I wasn't popular. And I was bullied at school because we were from so way to. And I was bullied because, like, at that time, we couldn't speak Afrikaans. You know what I mean? Mm. So it, it was tough at school. But when I started appearing on TV, yeah. Mama Nilin Duban Kenya Mulmo acting. I feel like if it was called on popular, Gaban Twemo Goriki, Pona Mara, Lena Mara is bad. Yeah. Yeah. You know, can I get, you know, I'm a TV girl. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, yeah, I, I, and, you know, it was fun. I was happy, you know, besides the fact that, you know what I mean, what I experienced mm -hmm. uh, with what was going on in my family. I think I also took it from my mom and my grandmother to come out of the shell mm -hmm. and I hid behind what I felt, you know, gave me more strength. And I looked at, I think, my strength and I said, you know what I mean? I'm going to focus on this career. I fell in love with sure. television. And even when I completed school, I remember the first biggest show that I got. It was one show called Teens on a Tight Rope. From there, Yaba Pamukade. And then Yaba Enweyaba Di Bwom Spray. I think I was about 21. Mm. And then I was also on, um, I got a job also go um, a theater, mm -hmm. Windy Brow Theater. And the funny thing is how I also got that job to be on the theater. Hey, Luna, let's see. <laughs> so um, I think I was around um, 20, you know, just going to 21. Yeah. Anyway, I got like a type of can't escape sending Type, yeah, type. Anyway, it's another story for another day. For another day. <laughs> but anyway, um, at that time, I think when I was 20, that's when I felt pregnant and I got my first daughter, a very beautiful, vibrant daughter. Mm -hmm. She's older now. And at that time, I was like, okay, fine. Now I'm sitting here. I've got a baby. What do I do? You know what I mean? And at that time, the father was not available, mm -hmm. you know. The father was touring all over the world, being in another famous show, you know, Sarafine and everyone. So I had, I had to now take over my life as a young woman mm -hmm. with a baby. And at that time, I am not working. I don't even have working. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? At that time, my mom and my dad had separated. And mm -hmm. now I'm, when my mom and my dad is separated, I had to go with my baby and go and stay at my grandmother's house, back to my grandmother's mm -hmm. house. But the sad part about now going back to what we call Gugi Tila. Mm. Now, it's a, it's a family home. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? It's cousins, a lot of cousins. Mm. You know, everyone. And here I am coming back. Now I'm coming back with a baby. Mm. But I had no choice. I had to go back to my grandmother's place. Mm. And at that time, thank God I had finished my matric, but unfortunately there was no money for me to probably further my studies to go mm. to what we call tertiary. Mm. So with that, um, it was a very painful and a tough part of my life because now here I am sitting thinking, what am I going to do now? You know mm. what I mean? How am I going to feed this child? Mm. How am I going to... Because now I'm a mother. Mm. And I remember... Waking up one day and I said, you know, I'm mm. You know, people yeah. don't know, and again, waitress. Sure. <laughs> I started standing up because I'm like, okay, Mama Lilia, I need to audition, I need to audition, I need to audition, I need to audition, what do you do now? Mm. You know what I mean? Here I am, Katamaya. I think it was somewhere called Range Groove, and there was a restaurant called Kawaii, Kawaii Jews. Yes. When I got there, you know what I mean? I was, you know, you know yeah. was this pretty little, you know, girl, you know, I was even tiny. Yeah. You wouldn't even notice who actually is like an one. You sure. know what I mean? Yeah, but I think I was in like 2021. 20, and then I went there, hey, you know, I'm looking for a job. Ying, ying, ying. And then the manager says, oh, no, there's no job. You know, we are full. We've got all the waiters. The waiter's like, but. We told her, well, there's no positions here. Maybe try next month. I'm like, no, it's fine. I understand. But at that time, I'm thinking, well, I'm going to go back 
home. How am I going to get better to go back home? Hmm. You know, I can only tell you that enough for your dates. And I've got a child as well who I need to go back to. I can't tell you that I can't tell you that. And then I can tell you that. And then I think around my lunchtime, the manager comes and says, okay, fine, you know. But also, again, I can tell you that. Then I said to him, Gary, it's fine. I will work for free. Mm. You know what I mean? At least it sure. one of the back and look at me and see, you know. And the manager says, okay, fine, but just know there's no pay. You know what I mean? Eh? You will get the tips. Mm. <laughs> and then I was like, no problem. I'm me being me. Yeah. When I started serving the customers, <laughs> God is good. Uh, I think on that day only, I think I made just the tip. It's a, Yo, it was a lot of, you know, back then, mm. like, yeah. but I think if I could have made like 300 rands, mm. you know, a day, wow. that was the most I could make. And every time I get lots of more and I would take that money, give it a go shop, right? To get a nanny and get a nappy. And you know, yeah. Then, you know, when we, when I got there, you know, my cousins, you know, then that's when I started being independent. And I come on now on the right, I'm like, okay, I'm still waiting for Mama Linda, you know what I mean, to call me for how can I lead the audition, I lead the audition. So what the, 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 the reason why I'm telling this story, I want to look at young people and say, you don't have to wait for them to say, no, come sign a contract. Yeah. You can go there and ask to volunteer. Mm. That's how I started making money, volunteering at a restaurant without a pay. And I made my money through the tips. And through those tips, I was able to go back home and help out Gut Growth. Yeah. I was even able to go back home to buy my child. Sure. You know, a name. And I remember even my other aunt who was staying there, Kimam Kholo, because she has passed on also now. I remember Mam Kholo one day, ah, hey, Marikin, Ekopar, maybe um, what is a grant? What is someone not granting? And, uh, you know, I don't know whether Nelly is what was inside me or I was like, me granting one, I got no ways, no, you know. <laughs> So I was like, never. Yeah. As much as I'm unemployed, but I know my worth. There was just something in me that I yeah. knew my worth. I would wake up every morning, eat chele chele day. I was sure. malama, not having chele day of coming back, not having money coming back, because I knew that I would come back with tips. And sometimes I would even do double shifts because I would even come back, you know, like get chase like about seven o'clock when the restaurant was closed. Yeah. And then I would, that's how I started making my first pay. And then um, the second job I think that I got was also a volunteering job. Mm -hmm. I w went to Mr. Price. Okay. Because a friend of mine was working at Mr. Price. It was at Hillbro when Hillbro was still the place mm -hmm. at the time. And I also went to Mr. Price and I said, no, I'm looking for a job. In. And they were like, no, there's no job, in, but you can take you as a temp. I'm like, yeah. okay, at least this is not, you know, the tip. So I started working also as a temp, mm -hmm. meaning I am not permanent, but at least every week I could get something, but at least this time was what? Employment. Yeah. And during lunchtime, I met, you know, one of the guys that I, I think was also in the industry. Mm. And then he was telling me, hey, you know, go in the Brow Theater on a little audition. Mm. Windy Brow Theater was, you know, the theater of the arts, that's where, you know, theater. Yeah. You know, yeah. I was like, oh, on a little audition, yeah, you know, they, there's a play called Maru. Mm -hmm. They are looking for Margaret Cadmo. Mm -hmm. like, oh, okay. I can need to get me to lunch. I want to really like one manager, supervisor. Okay, lunch. I'll go live in Azanke Mateso. Like what then? They're not expecting me. Yeah. They don't even know I'm coming. They didn't say there's auditions. But when I got there, I wonder, okay, Windy Brow Theatre again. And I got there. And remember, I walked to Windy mm. Brow Theatre. Sure. I give it a more. I know they said I must look for a guy, a man called Walter again. I got to the reception. The reception a guy. And they're like, no, okay. I'm like, hey, eh, give us a one and that will touch again. And Kanti is sitting here. Yeah. The reception is that time is giving me attitude. Oh, my Lord, one and that. Time to appointment. You need to make an appointment. I'm like, no, it's fine. I can wait if he's here. You know, even if he's coming late, I can wait. Now yeah. I forget to, I forgot to, I need to go yeah. back to work. Yeah. But something in me said, Balisa, wait. Yeah. And then I start speaking. I can, I can, speak well. yeah. you know, I can, I can talk and I share. And I said, no. There's an audition, apparently, you know, they're looking for a role called Margaret Cardmore, and, and I think I'm suited for that role. Guess what, it's a little well receptionist. Then this man starts laughing, yeah. and the man says, come and see me in my office. Yeah. I'm thinking, oh, okay. So now the receptionist is like, yeah, that they will touch again. Like, oh, that they will touch again. Like, starts talking to me. How did you know of us? I'm not about our actors. I said, come to work tomorrow. Ah, come to work tomorrow. 
following day, I went to Windy Brow Theatre and then the Kantidi Reheza Lidi Kadil. I got a script. I caught that script just within a day. Killing Margaret Cardmore Jr. I guess sharper young role. <laughs> so that's when I started growing and having a theater background yeah. as well. And when the film started coming on, you know what I mean? The role that they did, I'm all buttons on a tight rope, Bob Boom spray thing. I remember it was still not permanent, right? You would get per call, but God was gracing me with so much favor that I would get the lead role. Sure. But the thing was with, with me, there was still something in me that wanted more. Wow. Because on my off days, I would actually go in, go to work and ask the producer to volunteer. Mm. And in my volunteering, I even said to them, okay, Kukubo, we that sound. Mm. Can you believe what I've got an experience as sound, man? I know how to do sound. Hence, I'm telling even you guys, oh, I know this in sound. Mm. Put it like this, you mm. know. <laughs> yeah. mm. So I trained as a sound lady, sure. you know, for that show, yeah, boom, spray. And I think that's where I got my, my experience from. Then moving from there, I think I went into advertising. Mm. Advertising as well. There was a um, an advertising company agency called Velocity Films. That's where I also went in there and trained. And after training, they also um, I went into a government skills program mm -hmm. where they train young stars to go into to be into advertising. Yeah. So I qualified and I got a certificate as a uh, as an commercial producer. And we started producing commercials. So I was working under that company, Velocity sure. Films. So I am a qualified commercial producer. Yes, please. Yeah. Please. So recognize. Listen and listen. <laughs> recognize. <laughs> yeah. So afterwards, yeah, that's when, you know, I started spreading my wings. So if I'm not behind the scenes, I'm in front of the scenes. Sure. It's either maybe I am as a producer that I'm more qualified into commercial producing, or maybe I'll be in, the, in front of the camera. You know, so I've got experience as well of, as a transmission producer. I've worked, you know, with DSTV as well as a commercial producer. Mm. Sure, I think I've been speaking and speaking. <laughs> I but love that it. is more about, yeah, <laughs> maybe the ground. Yeah. Like, oh. yeah. <laughs> maybe oh. you can come with your questions. Hey, I love it. I love <laughs> it. And um, yeah. I always allow my guests to speak <laughs> because this is what this platform is all about. Thank you. you do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I just want to... Take it back. Yeah. I'm going to take it back to your mom. Um, you mentioned that your mom was, you know, abused, right? And that in the beginning, you stayed with your grandmother. Was that part of the reason why your mom sent you to your grandmother so, th so that you're not exposed to what was happening back at home? Um, not really. At that time, my mom and my dad were separating, mm -hmm. you know, they had separated because my mom went the other way and my dad went the other way. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was not nice in the house anymore. And I had just got in a baby. So I needed to go back to, I think, my my, my mom, Kulu, my mom's sister, mm -hmm. you know, as an elder was there. Mm -hmm. Because remember, my mom, when I look at the, the house was small and she was always drinking. So I needed that stability for me and the child. Mm -hmm. So that's when I had to go back to my grandmother's house, even though my grandmother had passed on at that time, but my mom Kulu was there. And, but only to find out when I got there, mm. you know what I mean? It was a whole lot of us. Mm. And now we were fighting for a space. Yeah. And you know, now my other cousins, mm. now where do we sleep, where do we, you know, mm. so yeah. And what type of conversations did you have with your mom? when you were still much younger to say that, but mom, like, this is how I'm feeling as your child, as much as you are the one that's going through it, but I'm also going through one, two, three, four, five. What types of conversations did you have with your mom that's before good, she passed that's, away? That's a good question because um, right now, I think if it was me going through that right now at the moment, with my daughter, with my children, things are different. We talk now with our children. We discuss things. We are open about, you know, anything that we talk, you know, with our children. And the education system is even different now because even our children are being taught, you know, about teenage pregnancies, about menstruation, about boys and girls. We're open now. The schools talk about it. We also talk about it openly with our children. But back then, there was no such a conversation between my mom and I. Back then, it was a time where, you know, even when you're a young girl and starting go, starting going on to, you know, the, the, the time of the month, mm. you, you, I was even scared to talk to my mom because mm. now when you go to the time of the month back then, 
it wasn't something that would be spoken about. So I that was money. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was a, that kind of a relationship. And remember with me as well, um, it was a time where my mom wa- was like an alcoholic. Mm. And when I looked at her at that time, she wasn't even at the right state of mind. Mm. She was going through a separation. Her marriage was broken, was breaking down. She, yeah. She would always, she was always not in the right state of mind because sometimes she would be drinking. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You know, to an extent now, mm-hmm. and you know how mm-hmm. so such conversations were honestly not really there with my mom. So I could see, Uri, you know, she was, she, yeah, she was just not in a, in a right yeah. Yeah, state at the moment. And Elena at that time, I was angry with her, you know, you know, you know, mm-hmm. you know. So yeah, I think only now when I'm an adult, when yeah. I'm a mother like this, now I realize what my mom went through. I realize the the pain, the 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 it, all these things that she went through, how tough she, you know, got, you know, she experienced her life or that part of her, you know, of her life. And um hence right now I, I actually I feel like I don't know if I should say I, I regret not being there for her. Mm-hmm. But then at that time, Lina was so young. I was just looking at my mom. You know, I didn't understand. I was just looking at a mom who's always drunk, a mom who's always drinking, goes, threatening at her, you mama, how can it and things like that. You know what I mean? But, and the sad part is how I experienced alcohol really finishing her. Mm. When we took her to hospital, how that liver was finished. Mm. And I remember the doctors calling me and my sister to say, you know, there's really nothing we can do about it anymore because the doctor has said a liver is irreversible. Mm. Remember, my mom, mama, nanoa, what we call the hot stuff, the meat, mm. you know. So, but once that alcohol bends the liver, the liver is irreversible. Even when we even went ahead and tried to see if we can get a donor, mm. there's a time limit number one, and the list is so long for the donors. Apparently, it was it's over 2,000 lists mm. wherever you can, even no matter how much money you can get. But for you to get a donor, mm. yeah, a liver transplant, it is very rare. It is very minimal. So um, it's not as easy as, you know, just saying, okay, maybe can we have a heart transplant mm-hmm. or maybe something like that. So um, it was at that time where I realized how actually I realized, where I experienced how alcohol it actually destroyed my mom's body, mm. my mom's flesh. She lost weight. Her stomach was big. Mm. The legs went big. The eyes turned yellow. And, you know, it, yeah, it, it wasn't a nice sight. Mm. But it was all because of alcohol. Mm. So at that time, she was also going through so much, so much in a mm. life separation, losing a house and losing this and come work about And then, you know, so there was no time for such discussions. Mm. I think, yeah. Well, I can only imagine that the same way that you couldn't have those types of conversations with your mom, that you probably felt like you also couldn't have those conversations with your dad as well to say, but dad, why are you actually allowing this to happen, right? But dad wasn't there. Remember, she was, he was also living his own life somewhere. And because of the fight, you know, I think they forgot about us, the children. Duh. You know, they were just selfishly probably looking at themselves and, mm-hmm. you know, it's all about them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Which takes me back to my life when I was married. Mm-hmm. I think at, uh, I think around 27 years of age or so, then I got married to a very good guy from Mafiking. And when I got married, I think, down the line when the relationship was just, the marriage was just not working. And I would say that I fell out of love with my husband. Mm. And the reason why I think I fell out of love with my husband, I was married to a very good guy, Mm. a very good man, who we had two children after my first daughter in the marriage. Mm -hmm. But I just feel like, or rather I can say that the marriage didn't work out because I felt like my husband at the time, ex-husband now, but husband at the time, mm. um, not in a bad way, but, you know, I feel like 
my husband at that time didn't have what I can call a backbone. You know, when you have a partner or rather even let me just put it bluntly, a, a man, a husband who is supposed to stand by you as a wife, mm -hmm. as a woman, as the mother of your kids, a husband that would not allow anybody else, I'm talking specifically family members, mm -hmm. to come into the marriage. Sure. And Babe Mula Wabo Namu. Yeah. You know, I just felt like family was so much in our marriage, mm. meaning my in-laws. My husband allowed the in-laws to come so much into my marriage. Babe Mula saying like he would be the husband in the house, but I as a wife in my own home mm. would not have a final say. Sure. So to me, that's why I'm saying, um, uh, I'm saying that I stand here and I say, I feel like I didn't have support from my husband at the time. My husband would do everything for us in the house and the family. She would do, he would do anything and everything for me and we're living a good life. But when it comes to family members mm. who probably came in and thought, oh, honor is not good for my son. Mm. This one is not good for my brother. Mm. You know what I mean? She's a girl from Soweto. Mm. You know what I mean? And at that time, I think my husband, my ex-husband was a breadwinner, mm. Bob mm. So, um, that's how I feel like. Yeah. This is my story. You know, this is how I saw it. Mm. And in that, I think it became so much to an extent. Now, even before we got married, we had family members as from his side that were meddling so much mm. in the plannings of my wedding. So I, as a woman, as a wife, didn't also have a say. Mm. You know, when my in-laws would come in and when I speak this with my husband, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? If I would be at fault, I'm not saying maybe I wasn't at fault. Maybe there were some ways where I was at fault. But when I, as a woman, was at fault, everything, you know, was blamed on me. Yeah, You don't like my, my sisters. You don't like my family. But when the sisters are doing wrong to me, it would be silence in the sure. house. There, there would she would not even take my side when it comes to family. Mm. She would take my side everywhere else, but not when it comes to family. Mm. And I think that drained me so much. Remember at that time, I was even a young mother. Now the second born comes in, mm. the third born comes in. I'm still a young wife and, you know, I'm dealing with so many things. Come mm. on, Gibata. I'm looking forward to my life only with my person, with my husband and everything, but family members. You know, sometimes they would tell Ribone Palisa, Palisa, they sent you. I got so drained, I got so drained that, honestly speaking, um, I fell out of love mm. with this man in the house called my husband. Sure. And um, when we separated, we separated before we even got divorced, but we separated. Mm. And the only thing that I regret mm. in my marriage, I don't regret divorcing, I don't regret filing for divorce. Mm. But the only thing that I regret is giving my children what we call or supposed to be a normal family life with a mother and a father. Mm -hmm. Because I realized also how divorce really affected my children, sure. especially my son. Mm -hmm. um, at that time, yeah, my son was still in primary mm -hmm. when um, the dad and I were divorcing, mm -hmm. you know. And then I had also a little baby, you know, a little child who was at crutch, mm -hmm. you know. So um, that's when I we had separated with my husband. I think I was so drained. I was just so tired being in this, you know. I, I was just so drained. I was tired of not being or feeling supported mm -hmm. as a wife. Mm -hmm. And I felt like in curricular when I use it to fill out with some words about now, because while the Muslim give me two months, but now I keep on running. That's it. You know what I mean. And at that time, I think we had separated with my husband. Mm. And I, the only mistake that I could say is that I moved on before signing, you know, mm -hmm. divorce papers. And at that time, when it was out, now I think you had separated for about three years. When it was out, that yeah, now a palisawa jola palisa ingi, and then I was labeled and called an adulteress, bambiza mm. manso, you know. Do you say what, what, the end, you know, the beach and all these names, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It was even taken to the papers. Yeah. And that was Palisa's divorcing because of this. And mm -hmm. But the truth, Gori, 
Nobody knew who the Nikidi Simomulo Mukanakana. Sure. Nobody really could understand, could put themselves in my shoes mm. of what was going on in my house. And as Musadi, there were a whole lot of other things that out of respect for him and my children, I don't want to let out of the, you know mm. what I mean? But the example that I'm trying to make here, Gori, patriarchy against women, mm. it's so much where we only look at women. Yes. Gibona. Yeah. Manana ona. Yeah. Okay, and Luana, Sebe, Yalong, Utile Lumana, support a Kimana ona. He inging your lebar white, some much ona, your laying, but Han Nanka work, I mamona as Musadi. Kawasa, who kill her banal incident day one, kill her as a hala so, kill her as a hala so, go the Kerrigan Quatra and Laman, kill like a credit phone call. Such things. I was a young woman, I was a mother, I'm nursing a child, things just or so. Mm. I don't remember any day I got the pampering or got the family members carry carry mm. I don't remember because when you get them, you become a woman. Yeah. But you retire a bit, a bit early. You hold it. Yeah. Tipo retire a bit early. You hold the knife, you know, in both hands, and you know, and you become strong. We are very easy. And what is hard. And then now I think it took me back to when I was growing up. Yes. Yeah. Seeing my mom, you know, going through the abuse sure. and everything. And I got so scared. And I got so scared. And the worst is when you're sitting with a man that you're like, okay, this is my husband. Mm-hmm. But do I really want to be here? Mm. Do I really want to be with this person? And at that time, selfishly so also, I started saying, actually, no. Nah. Mm. Actually, no. Nah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm mm. done. I even went to my dad and I begged that back go out. Mm. Not that. The man was not a good man. He is a good man even now. I mean, he's a good man. He loves his kids. And I know he loved me dearly. Sure. I, he, you know, he loved me dearly. But mm-hmm. the only thing I think the problem was, I feel like not having a support mm-hmm. from a man who's supposed to protect me, mm-hmm. a man who's supposed to cover me, mm-hmm. a man who's supposed to be my all. Mm-hmm. You know, my husband would protect me everywhere else, but when it comes to the family, yeah. I, nah, I was the one that was always strong. Mm. So the wrong and the selfish thing that I can say I blame myself for was not thinking of my children. Mm. But if I had not thinking of my children, are you saying I should have just stayed there for the sake of the children? Would I have been a happy woman? Would I have been, mm. you know, mm. like, yeah. And also, the thing is that children are very smart. They can see when there's no happiness, you know, in the house. So as much as you could have stayed, in most cases, we actually do more bad to the children than good. Yes. So I don't think that you should regret that. I think for me, hearing what you're saying, how does it make you feel because you had these parents who still, they also did not choose you, right? And now you are married and like you are thinking that I've now found that place of solace and the person still does the very same thing. How did that make you feel at the time? And did that in any way affect your self-esteem as a woman to say, nobody's choosing me. Not even my own parents chose me when I actually needed them to. Sure. You know, it do, at that time, I think um, I was just tired. Mm. I was tired. I was drained. So there was no even time of thinking. Hence, Gary, selfishly so. Now I'm saying it's selfish. Mm. Back then I wouldn't. I never even thought of my children. It was just all about me, myself, and I. Now I had to choose me now. I had to say, this is what I think was good for me. And I'm going to, you know, take over my life now. Because remember, I was also married very young. But I just didn't want anybody now. I don't control her anymore. Mm. You know what I mean? For once, I said, if somebody, if my husband, if my partner cannot fight for me, I'm going now to be a queen and just, you know, take over. You know what I mean? Get right, born, I mean, I feel like I've done it before. 
at that time, I mean, Mr. Zekin said he's the soapy, the, the generation, mm-hmm. the gospel, gold, the ending. I'm like, I, I was, you know, Nick, it's very familiar. I like maintain my family, yes, mm-hmm. with his support, but you, you know, he was a businessman, so business is not always, you know, working out. Yeah. So, but at that time, God has graced me, had graced me with so much more work. And the funny thing, Gore, even the in laws, they didn't even know who had land like in Namusadi can make it for me. You know what I mean? Bona, but I fell up on Nadi so, but said in Chabonadi, what was it in Chab? You know, yes, we are together, we are one. Mm. But at the end of the day, me at that time, I was, you know, I had the financial muscle. Mm. So how it's all getting up. So when I she been there TV and it lot of the got on like it's I don't know. Mm. You know what I mean? But at that time I'm begging, oh Musari, you're protecting your marriage, your family, mm-hmm. your husband. You don't go out and saying, you know, actually mama, we say this man thing who tatanyana. You understand? So yeah. But um one thing that I know about him, he he's a good man. Mm. Yeah, he he's a very good man. Um so and he's a good father, mm. you know. It mm. was just that one thing where I feel like also maybe the devil will like a Yeah. And also when you don't know who you are in Christ, you know, the word of God says a family that prays together, yeah, sticks stays together, together, stays together. You know what I mean? But then and my, my grandmother there's one quote that she used to love saying. She says, um, I think she was talking about the sticks. She says, My grandmother used to say Together we stand, alone we fall. Mm. So, but when another arm, um, you know, is going that way, among mm. it's going to be easily, you know, it's going to break easily. Yeah. Unlike Hanen Kebele Saba in Bomba, Rabaka Ufena Ratswarana, Ratwela, or Mang Osu Utlata, Osu Amang Utlata, Manabu Mamba, Mang Utlata, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, it was a time where I just got drained in my life. I got drained, or as much as I respected and honored this man. As much as I had wanted that marriage to work and, you know, it was a beautiful family, but people didn't know what I was going through. Mm. I think I got so drained at that time that there was no even time to think or again. I was like, I just went out of here. Mm. I'm done. Mm. And that's also another symptom of trauma because the moment you start taking over your life, it's because you felt like nobody has fought for you for so long that you have to take over your life because if you don't, then you know that nobody else will do it for you. You know what I mean? True that. True that. Sure. Yeah. How are you feeling during this moment? Like your, your mental health, you know, in this moment with this man who is supposed to support you. And I know... Like one of the most difficult things is to get married to a breadwinner. I am telling you, the family will fight you. They will fight you, not because they don't love you, but because they are fighting for the money. They want that money. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not about you, it's about that money. I'm glad you said it, I didn't say it. Yes. You said it. It's, it's always about the money. Yeah. You know what I mean? But how are you feeling in this moment? You mean back then? Or yeah, now? so back then. Like I said, it, I was drained. Mm. I think um, it, it just, I was tired in my, in my emotions were tired. I was mm. drained mentally. I was drained psychologically. I was drained if, even physically. Mm. I was drained. So, you know, at that time, it was a time where I didn't even want to think. All I knew is that I wanted out. Mm. I wanted out. Sure. Oof. That's why, you know, sometimes, see, how mm. you, you you just like I was just enough. I was enough with the fights. Sometimes there would be physical fights with me and the sisters. Mm. You know what I mean? Verbal fights. I was just enough. Mm. You know, because obviously I to go back. And then there was another fight that became physical. Mm. But still, when the partner comes. The man doesn't take your side. Wow. You know, the man doesn't take your side. It's always your fault. It's always our respecting you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes, maybe I was wrong to fight back, but I was drained. Mm. You know, maybe I was not also in the right state of mind, but I was drained. Yeah. You know, mm. and maybe he was drained too. I don't know. You know, I, I don't know. Mm. Unfortunately, this is my platform to tell my story. Yeah. To say it the way I, you know, I was mm-hmm. feeling and it's my journey. You know what mm. I mean? And it's not 
to sit here and make him look bad and mm-hmm. disrespect him. No, like I said, he was mm-hmm. a good husband. He was a, he's a, he still is a good father and he loves his kids. And you know what I mean? The, there's one bond that I know we share together. Remember, we were friends when I met this person. Mm-hmm. Um, our, that's why I met him at the Windy Brow Theatre. He wow. was also an artist, so okay. we were friends. You know what I mean? Even before we started dating, mm. we were friends. You know what I mean? So sure. there's one thing that I know you cannot take away from us. So no matter what, we shared two beautiful children. Let me say three, including Bahumi. Mm. You know what I mean? Because he was there. Mm. When I met him, Bahumi was one years old. Okay. So he had been a father, a father figure, and he still is a father figure to all my kids including Bahumi. So all my children call him daddy. Even now they are still close. Wow. If there's one thing that you cannot take away from him and the children is that love that he has for the yeah. children. Mm. Oh, I love that. I love that. I want to take it back a little bit. Oof. We want to talk about fighting for yourself a lot because my mom is also like that. My mom is a fighter. My mom is the type of person when we um, head to like a school and then about a Khakuna space, the person that you call is my mom because you know, Hori, by the end of the day, Khutra by the space. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, you know what I mean? Hori, the what, type of mom. Yeah. Khutra, don't want that little more space. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. my mom is the type of person where a place can have a policy. Yeah, Hori, no, we don't do this. Uh-huh. Uh-uh. Not Si You are going to give her exactly what she wants. But my mom also, similarly to you as well, she didn't have the support system from her mom, from her own siblings, and therefore she had to fight for everything that she has. So now she still has that fight thing within her. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, I feel like all my life I've been fighting. Yeah. And I'm at a point where I'm I'm tired now, yeah. you know? I even tell God sometimes that, Lord, I'm tired. I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired of always being the bigger person. Mm. I'm tired of the one that always have to make sure that things are like, you know, this or in order or in me. But then I also realized what we spoke about, especially just before, you know, we started shooting whether this battle Mm. is not yours. Yes. This is my battle. I made you. I created you. So I think I'm at a point where even when I get, you know, negative comments, go to blogger or whatever, you know, whatever people read about on social media, I, hey, Nenebo, hurry, you are getting me at this point of my life where I'm just settled. Otherwise, make it look and I want That's just me to say, ah, I was a wellness or come, sis, yeah, nah, nah. I'm that kind of a person. Sure. You know, I hit it head on. You know what I mean? I, I, it's fire with fire with me, what I mean. You give me something 10 times, I'll give you 80 times. Mm. You know what I mean? And especially when it comes for my family and my kids. But I thank God for maturity. Yeah. I thank God for the Holy Spirit that worked in me and worked on my imperfections. I thank God for for the covering. And I thank God for, you know, the, the Holy Spirit that is guiding me. Because now that I have given myself fully and wholeheartedly to the mm. Holy Spirit, I feel like it is God that is pruning me. Sure. God showing me the ways and saying, you know, maybe Luana, you might have played a role in this and this yeah. and that and that. There was a time where I sent my ex-husband an SMS mm. to say sorry. Not sorry that I wanted him back, mm. but to say if there's anything that I know of and that I don't know of that I've done to you but to cause you this pain, or the pain that I don't know of, or the pain that I know of, mm. just for that sake, you know, I'm sorry. Mm. I had to repent, and even to all those, because like I said, I'm a fighter, you know what I mean? Yeah. To say, Lord, may you make them forgive me, you know, open up their hearts so that they may forgive me, because there are some things that maybe need not be the end of God, and I'm not even aware. To me, it was all about but 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 maybe there's somewhere that I've also hurt you. 
So I can come up now mm. and say, forgive me. I'm sorry. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I'm just sorry. So the power that I have now is the power that is inside me. Sure. The word of God has given me the spirit of power, the spirit of love and of a sound mind. So that power that is working in, in me now, it's a different power. It's the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit that is perfecting me. Mm. So that is who I think I am now. You know, a lot of people, especially my cousins that I grew up with, they would look up for me, you know, but I mean, yeah. and I laugh and say, I thank God for the Holy Spirit. I thank God for the Word of God sure. because the Word of God says whoever you are looking for is not there now. You know what I mean? That that you are looking for, that woman is no longer there. Why are you looking for the dead in the living? Yeah. Jesus Christ has risen. And when he rose, I rose with him. Yes. Mm. This is a carpenter. That's what they used to say to Jesus Christ. But they don't know who this Jesus Christ is actually their savior. Sure. Why are you looking for the dead things in the living? We are the living now. We serve a living God. We do not say the God of the dead. Our God is not dead. Our God is alive. So we are sitting here today to say, I said the living God. That's how we say, I said the I'll change, I'll change. How about Unga Pilia Litlapa? I said, Do let people be a moya. That is God. If you only seek Him, you will find it and you will reveal Himself, Shanjing. Yeah. And that is what happened to me. But I have kept on falling up and down. It's not like I'm perfect. No, 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 I'm not saying I'm perfect. I am far from, from being perfect. But because I gave myself to God and I said, Lord, I surrender all. Lord, even in my imperfections, I surrender to you. All the cards, a job, all couple of things. Mm. cleanse me through, show me the way. You know what I mean? I don't know if it's age or if it's maturity, mm. but maybe even there, if I was at this point of my life, I would have made things different. I would have made different choices. I would have made different decisions, mm. you know. But I thank God for the Holy Spirit too. God is a forgiving God. God looks at you right now and she does not even think of your past. Mm. How would they know where now it is so well? Yeah, I know why it's so well. Yeah. You know, how many how we can say that how. So I'm going to work on again. I had a happy way how I'll touch it. I'll cover this is an old scene. I will see. So right now, I think I'm more calmer. But I get it all in grand. I get on cut it and cut the bands. It's got one in school. Cut that one. So you wouldn't be. Don't wake it at it. But it's still there somewhere. I did the book. Yeah. So I did learn in talk. But I'm okay. Okay. I'm done. Then get on the back. You know, get on the back. Yeah. You speak a lot about regret. Have you forgiven yourself about a lot of decisions that you have taken, you know, in lives? Honestly, I think I'm working on it. Thank you. I would say that I have forgiven myself, but sometimes there are some things, I cry. So when I cry, then I sit and say, but I thought I had forgiven myself. I thought I had moved on. I thought over the kids in the mountain say, you know, so but why, Lord, is it still hurting? Mm. Like, I find it very painful and hurting to forgive my in laws. Shall I? You know, but I pray every day and say, Lord, help me to forgive and forget. Mm. Help me to forgive and forget. But sometimes, when I know the Lord has something to do, and I go on and end, it's a sin to end. Mm. You know what I mean? So, uh, I would like to say, I'm forgiven. I'd like to say that, and I'd like to say I've forgiven myself. Mm. But I think I have forgiven myself for the fact that I'm able to talk about it now. Since mm. so talk about did it and without, I don't hate them any night. Yeah, you know what I mean. I was to, I used to be so bitter, go on and cause I would blame and blame and blame. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? So yeah, but I guess sometimes when we look to set up a phone, we we talk at the end, we at the you know, but we at the shed and we end so. So maybe they were my fellows. You know what I mean? So I can safely say that uh, I'm working on the forgiveness. I've forgiven them, but not helping to forgive them. Like I said, you know, what the word of God says, Lord, I forgive, but help my unbelief. Yeah. I have faith that helped me in my faith. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So the sure. fact that I was able to move on it, you know, yeah. Cling, cling. It's been 10 years now since the divorce. Hmm. And forgiving doesn't just happen once. You know, that happens all the time, you know. 
And you think even your mom, oh, he's, oh man, I, I was I a long time. I think um, when my mom passed on, I was on the bedside, on her bedside, mm-hmm. and I remember reading a scripture. I think it was Psalms, was it Psalms 27 or Psalms 25? So I was, I'm the one that closed my mom's eyes, Sean, in the hospital. And um, I remember saying a prayer and we were there. But at that time, she was not well. She was only in an out of consciousness and didn't just in the bed, uh, hospital bed. So before we left hospital, my sister and I remember taking out the Bible and she know what I mean. Mm. And praying for her and reading that scripture. Mm. So um, I, I think I've never been angry with my mom. I was just, it was paining me, seeing what she was going through, me. knowing the vibrant Pamela that she was, knowing the happy pen that she was. My mom would carry to her room, there was no way you would not know she said. She, she would brighten up the room. My mom was that person that all things, you know, how can I tell us something to me? I don't know what I do, I don't know what I do, you know what I mean? That's the life, that's the mom that I know, you know what I mean? And so he loved it. Yeah. But what destroyed my mom was, I think my mom loved my dad so much. Mm. My mom loved my dad so much that she could not handle the separation. And then she resorted to alcohol. So I saw how alcohol destroyed her. And I, for me, it was more beginning to love soup. I went back. I was never in me. And my mom, it was just obviously the pain of a child singing mother's life goes you down. Mm-hmm. And you, have you forgiven your father? And yeah, we are very close with my dad right now. And the funny thing, I'm going to say this. Mm, the father that I had, Papa. When I was 19, I found out to me she was not my real dad. Yeah. And uh, that, yeah, you know, that had me so much, that grown as a, as a child. I think that's when I, you know, just lost it. Because to me, uh, there was one thing that I didn't understand. Oh, hi, you know, my dad has other kids and my sister, but I was the favorite. And I still am in my Papa. Sure. So, but even though my mom and my dad were going through their own things, but my dad, Papa, okay, not say that. Like, you go high, then they want to send somebody to ask for something, go, Papa. They would say, when I am, because you know, you know. Yeah, so I was shocked and I was hurt to say, but how come I'm not the child, I'm not his blood. And this man never treated me any, Sean, any, you know, like, there's no dent in guarantee I'm, I'm, all back and hands you all by itself. Instead, Baba and they, were, they would be the ones getting in beaching. So I didn't understand that and I loved him so much. I still love him so much. Look, Baba is my favorite. You want to know what I know? They know, even my sister, so that I'm the favorite child. Mm. You know, but the person that I had found difficult to forgive was the man that I found out was my real dad. Because my mom told me only. Uh, we had some, uh, I'm not talking, uh, and had uh, somebody else said that when I was 19, he like, I'm a toner, and then that guy was like, no, you know, the, I've ne- I didn't deny you, I didn't deny your mom, it's just that, you know, things happen, whatever, take us into the settling us on the path. Like, I'm not quiet. To me, when I met the man, he was a stranger. Never a kid, Papa, because he never a kid, Papa, how? No, but I'm not going to get traded by default when people were talking. It's not that I found the lineage in my dad. You were all my mom the lineage. You know, when any the men started talking. Yeah. I think, and then Hagi feet her boy, and you know, and it was like, hey, and day, you know, when I know I know what doubt, you know, it is young kids, young kids, you know what I mean? But um, to me, again, I couldn't be closer to him because niggas I'm not crying. And when my father, papa now, when, he found out to him how to get to you. He was so hurt. So I was more concerned about my papa's feelings to say, yo, because papa was fighting, papa was so hurt, and I'm the mobilian, let's say, you know what, what, you know what I mean? I think I was more closer. I still am more closer to my dad because he's in and I, you know what I mean? Um, but one thing that I see in him now, he regrets everything, you know, mm. that happened. And you can see he's a changed man and he's bringing the family together. Right now, he's a pillar. Sean, myself and my, you know, and my siblings, my sisters. 
and she's the only one now that we have except for mom when we have and papa is the one on sparing soon i think she regrets a lot she doesn't say it verbally maybe that's how he expresses himself but to me he is there for us now he is our grandfather i feel like what i mean yes. he's a father to us but even now i'm still our best favorite clown means you seem to me like you are also the type of person that puts other people's feelings in front of your own. Um, when we spoke about your mom, you were more worried about your mom. You were like, this is uh, the type of person that my mom is. My mom is a, a drunkard because of one to two. Um, you, you, you sort of like leave your emotions aside all the time. You spoke about your dad and how your dad turned up his your mom and, and how you, you can now see things according to how he was, but it's never about finding some. And when you had that child, it was always about one. I need to feed one. This guy lives to me. He is successful. He's this, but he made me with a child, but I, I'm going to focus on my child, so then I need to fight. Where is Bali inside all of this thing? Where is Mpungi in all of these things? Where are your emotions? Where is, when do you say, you know what, I'm going to put myself first, not because I'm worried about the other person. When you spoke about your marriage, you were talking about the guilt. Kori. I feel bad because of my children. Um, where are you in all of these things? All of Shouldn't it? I wish I can answer that because you hit it spot on. Mm-hmm. I think I have been so much also because of that, even in friendships as yes. well. I would trust, trust my friends so much and keep my all to my friends and at the end of the day, I'll be the one earning. Yeah. You know, um, I don't know why I'm like this, but I had an atom of pain before you know. I wish I can maybe one day take the power to say, actually, you know, I really make you poor, no, you know. I can follow that self, I can't one person. I'm not a waste, I can't have a lot of work today. Friend, can I have a hundred trend? I'd rather go and share. Okay, I didn't get 50, 50, and I can't have a bunch of money, and I can't have a lot of money. I guess I'm just like that, man. I'm just like that. You know, mm. maybe that's my weakness, maybe that's my strength, but not to me, I think it's my strength mm-hmm. because I'm a giver. <laughs> I love to see other people happy. I want it to be happy. I don't like seeing other people suffering or in pain or lacking. You know what I mean? So, and for now, I think I love my kids so much that I will do anything for my children. So I sacrifice a lot even for my children. Mm-hmm. There was a time, um, I had a, a Porsche Cayenne. Mm. I was driving a Porsche Cayenne, and at the time when I was driving a Porsche Cayenne, um, my child's school fees had to be paid, and there was no any other way because the dead dead side is a freelancer for a business. I am not on a project. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a freelancer, so how you project it yet? I'm thinking, look, I'm not going to stop buying the children. I need Porsche Cayenne on to. I think it's great. It's amazing. One time I paid for my child's stick. He's a master dog. You are some more with your provide You know, for buy it again. You will provide an even better car than a Cayenne. You know, and with that, a Cayenne to me is just an interior. It's absolutely like I am to pay my son's fees. And guess what? God is so good. Like my son came back with all his dishes. Oh. Now she's going to, you know, do his degree. This is his last year. And I said, Lord, I know you'll provide another car. But if this does not happen again, this is just an chill. I'll sell this car just to make sure my kids they get a, the future that they deserve. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think my kids best don't you know. Mm. What type of conversations do you have with yourself behind those doors? One on one. Vanessa? You are beautifully and wonderfully made in the image of God. Are you son, nothing must break you. Well, nothing must break you. It had you worked up. No blogger, no write up, no journalist, no amount of words will take away the woman that you are. Sure. 
No words can take away your values as a woman, standards as a woman, my strength as a woman, my goals as a woman, my beauty inside and outside. Mm -hmm. No one can take it away from me. Mm. Be a child of God. Mm. That's how I always stand in myself. But more than anything, I'll go back to the word of God. Sure. You know, he said it's like the worship. He said it's like the word of God. That I can God because I had very children. Even on times, you know, where I go down, where I feel down, you know what I mean? And things are going on. Sometimes they say, so I'm not going to give how it ain't go, how you, you know, there was a type. Anybody sitting, you know, what would take inside the darkness, what I call darkness, give one of us making to one of that and put say, hiding there, get a kid, 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 get a Throughout me buying a sale area with a big ramen moon woman, who me go me to consult share and deck. My child, my daughter was cleaning the house, my son was cleaning the house. And I'd watch him and I'd say, I'd not stop it and just in get me back at a sale and I'd say, I'd say, I'd say, I had to go through that gin. I had to go through that gin until God came to him, came himself to me. But you know, I'm telling you, 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 and when there was one main thing that made me turn around, when I saw myself going to hell. Mm. And to me, I'll say that was a vision for me. Mm. It wasn't even a dream because when I was going to hell, I felt the heat. Mm. I felt the heat. I was sweating. I was going with so much speed into this tunnel. And when I looked down, my body was just descending to this hole, hole, or whatever. And when I looked down, yo, it. People were burning. People were burning. People were trying. People were trying to reach out. And I could see go myself going down. And I come on up. I'm trying to, what's happening? When I looked up, there was the stature of a dragon. A dragon, but to me, in my spirit, I knew that's a devil. You know what I mean? Look out of what's head, and I was going down to hell. And when I looked down, people were crying. People were screaming, thank you. People were screaming, When I felt the heat, just when I was about to go down, and I was crying, and I was saying, God, forgive me, Jesus, forgive me. And then there was this kind, this light. Mm. Let's open that lamp. Out. Oh, people were that way. Burning. Mm, people were burning. And I got so scared. Hacky Papa, after that hand pulled me out, I knew it was an image of Jesus. I don't know how, but someone in the spirit, not about the lines, and yet us. Life is spiritual. You just know and know when we give me this in the hand of Jesus Christ. There was so much light on that hand. Mm. It was bluish, so much light and so much peace and I reached out to that hand mm. when that hand pulled me out because it was a time I was doing Jesus, Jesus mm. and then I woke up mm. and I had it pop up. I was sweating like little and sweating sure. and at that time it was a turning point in my life mm. you know out of all the other things that I've been having you know I'm entering mm. when I give but that dream of going to hell really changed my life and I think that's when I started going back to say, Lord, what is it that I'm doing? What is it that I did? But I remember that that day before the dream, I went to Facebook and I wanted to know about my life. I wanted to know about my future. Mm. And I went to Facebook and I saw a post. Yeah, a psychic. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to know about your future, if you want to know about your future, curious for me. Mm. Take a photo, what's up, what's up, and I will never say that under me taking the money I'm going to give you, okay, or men are 1,000, just to mm. proof of payment on WhatsApp, okay, guy, the next thing the email comes back and you up this and this and this about you. Then I was like, no, but Lord, and then I go up by the thing, by the need energy, you know, not consult. But yeah. Like, we shall not think in mm. And I'm like, no, this is what I probably must have done. You know what I do? And then the sons and kindy move, sons and kindy boy, and then God also takes him to say, you know, my coming in, it's always like, what do you trust? 
Yes. Those things started coming back. Those things started coming back to say, Lord, the word of God says this. So can you direct me? Can say this guy said this? Can say this guy said this? Mm. And then in the morning when I woke up, I couldn't go back to sleep afterwards. I started praying, praying, and praying because I was crying. Mm. It was a first time I see such a dream. It was the first time I was like in such almost, you know, going down into that pit of hell, that fire. Sure. So in the morning, I started saying, hey, maybe let me clean my house. Mm. Yeah, clean my hand and get so free. Like, I'm, like, mm. I'm scared. I don't even know what to say in prayer. You know, go it. I'm shaking. You know what I mean? I was with my daughter in the house. I started cleaning it. I woke up with the last time I had it. And then, sounds like it's clean. I'm like, ow. In my cupboard, so many, you want to get to that, you want to get to that, you want to And they sell the land. I'm a billionaire. This cloth, actually, there's a cloth. Mm. Let's not tell you. Let me say something. This cloth, I was told to buy. Well, firstly, I saw the cloth in the dream, mm. right? And then when I went to the lady, okay, look, consult, I'm going to get to the land. And then one of the dreams happened. I remember going under the water. Mm. I remember this Samboma. I don't know them, but holding me because every time I would dream of water, 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 you know, like I didn't understand what was happening. Mm. And every time there would be this water coming in, or maybe it's like, oh, one of them would say, oh, God, I the sea, ocean, here, had, yeah, this. And a big wave wanting to probably come to me or follow me, I would always run away. Mm. But then this time when I stood there in a dream, the Samboma, one of the Samboma's runs by Kita, Boba Kito, whom I'm Panisi, in a dream. And then this Samboma comes and grabs me by my hand and puts me in the water. Mm. In a dream, as I'd never been in so much speed with. Excuse me. The next thing in a dream, it again, like I'm with the boom, mm. inside with so much speed. And then, all of a sudden, I found myself under the water. I'm like, there's a dry ground. So now, I'm thinking in my conscious, oh, so it is true that in land under the water. You know what I mean? Mother, how can the get shed? I warned you. I'm like, hey, me. It's, it's still the ocean. So I'm like, I'm able to breathe. My husband can get shed, and I'm like, okay, I'm looking at this law, this ground. This song of message to me, he's wearing the same cloth. Mm. I've read to put her name really read. And then he says to me, Kutana, Kuta, but that time he's holding my name. But I get it just have a lamb with a corner. Or I need it down that the down like in bold and you know when yeah, yeah. Need down. But in my spirit, again in my spirit, I know the word of God sings, you know what I mean? No. This not one more, you know what in my spirit, something in me. And then how can I get shabba come with a sand go? It's dry ground. And then walking up, she said, what they get it? No, mm. that was that. Leave me. I'm not going to do this. Mm. And then I woke up. Mm. So when I was starting telling my dreams to people and to my friends, then my friend says, Mom, I'm humble, but I'm not bad. You know, go and see. Just because the labels are mad. Because maybe clearly you have a corny. Mm. Why get along? My son, no, my wife, bring me, get along. I just put this shot by and I'll find myself. But you would get. And then make it like what I'm reading. See, I, I didn't understand where the spirit is coming from. I'm thinking, okay, but I give a lot. If he had water, if it's not my sound, go back up a shepherd. Now I wait even under the water. Mm. And that's when I realized soon we found what Bob when he took if you don't know light the spiritual. Yeah, light the spiritual. They been a turning it under the water. There is light under the water. There is a ground under the water. Mm. And only if you are in the spirit you will understand. You will not understand if you're not in the spirit. Sure. But then I went and consulted somebody to you to some man, Hanko or Kovena, what it. And then obviously I had to go there, came on with no layman. I don't know what's happening. And remember, at that time, it was a time where I was not spending time only with the Lord of God. It was a time where I was not even trained, I was not even going to church. Mm. But those things kept on coming. So now the governor Nama says, no, I have to do it and make gifting and and then the humble you know, like I said, 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 I asked him, I said, Mama, God, I believe in Christ. Yeah. And God, I get, I want you to understand that how do these things, you know, and then the Gogo says to me, no, oh, I want it because listen to the humble lad that. Oh, yeah. What's up? I will. 
Me being a born again, I'm lifting up my hands and I'm thanking the Holy Spirit. And I start speaking in tongues. Jehovah, that will I'm listening. Yes. Jehovah, Jaira, Jehovah, Mikadesh. Yes. Jehovah, Elohim. Jehovah, Tzidkeri. Jehovah, Kabo. I start praying and I start praying. And I start Rabakashi. Yes. Rakashak. I start Rabakashi. Just when I started praying in tongues. Just when I started praying in tongues, Bobella comes and pushes me. Yes, So, in your tool, you know. But we are at the waters. And man's a man's a man's a hammer. Mina, I'm thanking the Holy Spirit to my mind. I thank God for cleansing me. But I'm inviting the Holy Spirit. Yes. I'm inviting the fire of the Holy Ghost. Because in my mind, I'm thinking, what you have been cleansed. I thank you, God, what you have kept in your mind. I'm calling the name of Jesus. Yes. The mama pushes you in the water because now she's angry. Uting na bees in this little dana. Yay. Much I almost slipped into the water. Say, I'm going to go to the water. Say, see, I'm going to go to the water. Yeah. Why I won't push it because the tennis because I haven't been on the next set yet. What does the other one up on Pisha and the land? What touches care some land? Say, I am the motor in the land. Come on, so early. Sure. And then I was like, I'm not this old to bed and listen to this. Why, eh? Why make this way? Yeah. Why can't you be some way with step? Yeah, and it's only before that Jesu kills the one that's diverted. Jesu or sweating the bizarre. The Lord God of homes. No means of peace. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lord. Why had you no bees? I can't move always. I get a job. I can't ever ask. I I I think because the bees put that on the bees are busy for that. You need busy. Do that. Do you need busy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand? Yeah. That's when I started to realize we would put the lamb at his yard. Ah, na na. We got to the land. Hamba put. Na na. Come on, shy down. Na na. Be who you are. Na na. But that's when I think it was a revelation to me. My hamba na na. You understand? So two years later, that's when I found the cloth. Then that cloth took me back. Sure. When I was saying to you, you know, remember I had just dreamed of hell that night. Mm. Dreamed of going to hell. So when I started thinking, what about this? 
king in Madame Toy and say, Non Pomede, the winning Toy and see the God of Woodic, also Oboring Guru Kodwood. I keep and I puzzle when you ready go to hell. And then I started thinking, okay, during the day, you know, God is like he can get it, and it's our papa with. Oh, at our one, I do not have like our one. I was so much that the psychic in me, but when the sample man, Nini, what's one again, Nini, what Opola, when all that no one above me see, the one in a hat to hand told ma. Cassia asked me, but who I am? Yes. I remembered who I am in Christ. I remembered that I am beautifully and wonderfully made. Yes. Image of God. I remembered that I was cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. I remembered that I announced and I said Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Mm. And then when I remembered that, I remembered also doing a shoot on those reality TV show, publicly so, publicly doing a shoot too. And me going inside of Nobela, me going to Linyada, to Isangoma, and me bowing down to a shrine. So God is saying to the what are you doing? Are you bowing down to me? Yes. When I remember that, I can I went to you, you know what I need is scripture. I think it's in the book of Mark. Is it the book of Mark already? I will remember. But the word of God says, um, if you publicly Yes, if you publicly and as Lord is acknowledge me, acknowledge yeah. I don't know if somebody can look at me, you know, for the but it says if you publicly acknowledge me, you know. In front of the people, I think the scripture says that I will publicly admonish me. Final yeah. fact, but yeah. So when I took that block, yes, I wanted to destroy it. But then the word of God said to me, "We now, we now, we don't go to TV, go to reality show, and we know I'm not going to win. Now you belong to this kingdom." Yeah. Kabo wa abena mara. You went publicly, go tell the people, "So I'm you, but is that you belong to the kingdom of what of Obumbo ma of what?" So I took that lot cuts. So my light up started denouncing, denouncing. Oh. I cancel the spirit of bondage. I cancel the spirit of lies. I cancel the spirit of rejection. I mm. cancel the spirit of darkness. I cancel and I cancel. And even getting another chance, I will do it again. Sure. So I did like it. I was canceling what was keeping me, that is, uh, in bondage. I was keeping what was keeping me, that is, uh, in darkness. That spirit of stagnation, that spirit of delay. I remember even when I went to that in Roma, I saw even a tortoise. Sure. What is a tortoise? Is the tortoise not snow? Yes. I had those like dun 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 I was actually even receiving and taking in the spirit of stagnation, the spirit of backwardsness. Hence, I am still struggling so much. Sure. Hence, I'm still struggling so much. My years of me, like I said, I'm always fighting the things. I always fight for roles. I always fight. You know, I've got a company, right? Mm. My company, I do project management. Even now that I have to fight for my, you know, for, 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 for me to get that project. Mm, it? I'm like, no, Lord. Lord, this, I'm going to denounce it publicly. Yes. Publicly. Yeah, the same way that I made a public spectacle of my father in heaven. Mm. I'm going to now make a public spectacle because mm. Jesus Christ is my redeemer. I did that. I sure. did that. And I did that. I am not regretting it. I am not sorry. I'm sorry for those that are feeling sorry. But I do not apologize for burning my cloth. Yeah. That was keeping me bondage. Mm. I used my fire. So clearly that fire, that, that, that fire ruffled feathers. Clearly that fire. Because those who were against them, throwing coy, you know, insults and in, I'm like, 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 there is no distance in the spirit. Yes. Because when the fire of God, when the Lord God of yes. hosts comes, when the Lord God of hosts comes, how young are you? She's everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Sure. So, so ni she's why you got like that. You need to she's side. Moba minang she's a la lentole. Lebe ni chelo gut ibambe i bonde i jia. Hmm. And I said, hmm. Those who have ears will hear. Yes. Those who have eyes will see. Yes. Life is spiritual. Sure. I had to denounce. And when I started denouncing that, God now came through, the Lord God of hosts, things started opening up. Mm. All the dreams that I used to have, mm. because I am the Lord God of hosts, I am your Amen. mother. I knew you before you were born. I interwoven you in your mother's womb. Amen. I know who I am and I know who I am. Oh, I've been given the spirit of power. Mm. I do not fear anything because this battle is not mine. This battle is the Lord. Amen. So when you fight, just know that you are not fighting me. Yeah. You are fighting the Lord God of hosts because this battle is not mine. 
Sure. Lord. And Jehovah is Jehovah Tabula Mazulu. Amen. Isaiah 64. Yawa Tabula Mazulu. Oh, let your, you know, fire, let your fire come down mm. and take over, Lord. Let your fire come down. But Lord, you are Jesus is Lord. Amen. Our God of hosts. Oh. Yo. Some cool man cool. I'm not a preacher. I do. I'm not a pastor, right? I'm not an. I'm not ordained. I'm not a sure. pastor. I'm not a preacher. I am just telling my story. I'm just beautifully and wonderfully made in the image. Amen. How long has this been going on? Wow. Listen, I got to look is senior. I had other questions. Can I just close this? Because wow. <laughs> Jesus is Lord. Yes, sir. But Lisa, you've got two hands and you've got ten fingers. Are you reaching your full potential? I'd like to think I am. <laughs> sure. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. I will reach my potential in yeah. Christ Jesus. Amen. I've got a few perspectives that I want to ask you on then. What is your perspective on freedom? Sure, freedom, liberty. I thank God for giving me freedom. God has given us a choice to make in life. It is your choice. There's no in-between in God. It's either you choose the light or darkness. Yeah. But what I thank God for is that when light came into darkness, darkness could not overcome it. Yes. So I am the light that shineth upon the mountain top, Amen. on the mountain hill. I am the light that came into darkness, but the darkness could not comprehend me. So I am freed by the blood of Jesus Christ. I am the redeemed of the Lord. Amen. That is freedom to me, taking back, taking back my power, which is the power that Christ has given me. Sure. I am free. In my spiritual, in my spirit, I'm free. Amen. What is your perspective on beauty? Hey, we grow up knowing what you're being taught, what beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Mm -hmm. Well, I always say I'm beautifully made in the image of God, but that image is not only outside. Beauty is inside. Yeah. Because the outside, mm. the outside is something that can go away. You can get married to someone who is beautiful right now, but then if anything happens, maybe goes into an accident or in God suddenly mm -hmm. she changes that person. Are you going to say you still love that person? Mm -hmm. You know what? And because she was beautiful, because she had a weave, because she had eyelashes, what if those things, you know, go away? We grow older in life, you know? I'm not like how I used to be. I used to be slender. I used to be beautiful. I used to be, you know, to have a shape. Right now I've accepted that I'm a matured woman. You know what? I'm, my body has changed. And I'm comfortable with my body. So are you loving me because Palisa Kwamu TV? Because Palisa can say we be Palisa. I can't even tell you we be say we still can tell you I know she's an outland tata na. Yes. Outland sheba na. How's it going to do to go up on to do this? Because I can't even hear you. Because I can't even hear you. Outland tata na. So beauty is inside. Love yeah. person for who she is. And may God help us. May God help us. Say that you know. We may love each other. We may see the spirit in a person because sure. we are spiritual beings. Yeah. I cannot just see it to get, ah, it to yeah. look and sell a ponder, yeah. it doing it. Yeah. But what is your heart? Because God looks at your heart. So yeah. that is beauty for me. Oh, we need a second conversation. And I'm saying that because I really wanted to delve you know, into beauty with you and how you overcame the scars and the... Um, accident that you went um especially because you've always been this beautiful girl right and then now all of a sudden now when you discuss how do you like that how do you have to like now like um live with that and still find your beauty once again but we will have that in the second conversation i think god wanted to do what he wanted to do through this conversation and i got to see yeah you know what I mean? Panisa, please take that mirror for me. Hey. <laughs> Hello, you. Look at you. Hello, Nompumelelo. Nompumelelo. Yes. I started seeing my greatness and my power and my beauty 
when I stopped looking at me, but I started seeing me, what do you see when you look into that mirror? He, Lord, you're giving me too much credit <laughs> with what I've been through, Father. Sometimes I feel like you're giving me too much credit. You think I'm strong. You think I'm powerful. You think I can stand everything. But Lord, you're giving me too much credit. That's what I see. And this episode was made possible by Same View Pictures with their state-of-the-art video equipment and Vela Productions with their state-of-the-art post-production powered by IS Wines. But listen, this camera, this camera, this camera, what do you have going on? What should people look forward to? Where should people follow you on uh, social media? We are so excited and we want to follow your journey. Ah, thank you, Lord. At the moment, I thank God for a radio job. Um, I'm at Rainbow FM 90.7. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is a Christian or community radio station. I thank God for the foundation mm -hmm. that um, you started me in. And I know there's more elevation that is coming. Um, at the moment, I'm also working on my podcast. Now? Nice. Uh, yeah. Yes. So the name of the podcast is um, Let Me Tell My Story. It's my story. And yeah. Itu is going to be in it. So <laughs> yes. Going to be interviewing Itu as well as one of our guests. And then I've also just got, thank God, I just got a, a TV presenting gig. Nice. I'm not going to mention, but just look out for it. I'm yeah. Eric on TV as yeah. a television presenter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so far that's what I'm busy with. But um, I know that God, you know, has more in store for, for me. So God will surprise me. Sure. Oh, but listen, a candle tried to burn me. It also tried to ruin me. It also tried to kill me. But that very same candle lives within me, and that candle is shining bright. And I'd like to say it to your candle as well. Keep shining. And thank, thank you. I give you a hug. Of course. Oh, beautiful. Gallibles. Thank you so much. And from me, Mrs. Itumeling Sikubedi, keep your perspective alive. Mm -hmm.